Patch 4.11 of Legends of Runeterra has released a ton of new Titanic units into the game. So that comes down to the question, what is the strongest Titanic unit now? Good morning everyone, my name is Kryn, welcome to my Canadian apartment and here are my top 5 best Titanic units in the game. For this ranking, I gave myself a few rules to make things more interesting. 1. No champions. Champions are the focal point of most decks and we can assume that they're pretty strong. So to challenge myself, I'm only looking at followers. 2. Units don't have to be main deckable, so units like Darkens are also part of this top 5. And 3. This is completely my opinion. You may think differently, so change my mind. And as always, if you enjoyed this type of lore content, like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, let's get started. Starting off the list, at number 5, I chose a funny card, Catastrophe. This card is technically the strongest Titanic unit in the game, but that's only if we ignore the summoning conditions of the unit, where you have to play 20 unique cards during the match. This on paper is a pretty daunting challenge. Both decks with Seraphine and a hold invoke package, this requirement is doable. If this unit does land an attack, it's an instant win, but the only problem is landing it. Catastrophe is just a big overwhelm unit. With Shadow Owls, you can vengeance it, and it's gone. There's also stunning it with Ionia or denying the initial spell. You can also frostbite it with Freljord. And the worst part is, with all the regions having an explorer, every deck can have a keyword silencer. But in conclusion, while Catastrophe does have many weaknesses, if you play your cards right, this is a solid titanic unit that works as a secondary win con, and that's why it's my number 5. In the number 4 spot, we have She Who Wanders. This is your opponent's trial by fire. If they don't bring strong units to the game, you win. Any board setup and backup in your opponent's sleeves are all gone with a single effect. Getting to summon She Who Wanders has also been made much easier as the card is in Freljord, the same region as Sigils. With the support from Sigils, you can summon this unit and decimate your opponents earlier in the game. And even if your opponent's cards do survive the initial effect, they still have to face a 10-10 unit with regeneration. Overall, the only complaints about this card that I can think of is that it's 10 mana, as well as being very matchup dependent. Sometimes the game goes too quickly and you can't reach the end game, or sometimes the opponent is also aiming to reach the end game too with big units. But that's why that's my number 4. And in the number 3 spot, we have one of the newer cards coming from patch 4.11, Enraged Flamespitter. After a couple of games with Jin Volibear, I can confirm that this is a very strong unit that is excellently designed. The card having 8 attack means that anything it challenges dies, while having 4 health means that it can survive certain spells like Aftershock or also survive challenging smaller units. And to top it off, if you're playing Flamespitter with sigils, you can have this unit on the board as early as round 5 with only one sigil. And this early into the game, most units die from its play effect of taking 2 damage, while your opponent additionally burns 2 Nexus health. Flamespitter just screams value. And I forgot to mention that it's a dragon. After them being super cool, it has a lot of support from a variety of regions. Is this card overloaded? Absolutely, and I love it. And that's why I put it as my number 3. Following the pattern, in number 2 we have another new card in the game, Bodir of Black and Dice. Shortening the reason why Bodir is one of the best, for 8 mana you get 3 bodies, all of them have a stat line of 8-8 eight, eight, and 2 of them have Overwhelm. But to balance it out, the 2 other bodies spawn as landmarks first, nope, screw that. 8 mana, 3 bodies, 8-8, eight, eight, 2 of them have Overwhelm. We Rico, we Rex, we Overwhelm! Anyways, Bodir has a lot of good things going with it. With the unit's effect triggering on summon, there are plenty of ways to cheese Bodir. Such as with Warmover's Call, you can get the full benefits of Bodir without spending the 8 mana. Bodir being a dragon unit also gives it additional support from the dragon archetype. The only issue that Bodir has is that it's a wide unit. The full unit takes 3 spots on a board, and if your opponent has more than 3 units before Bodir, you lose more than a third of the value. But that's why Bodir is my number 2. And before we announce my number 1 pick, Liam, give us a drum roll. And in the number 1 spot, we have an insanely reliable unit that works in essentially any deck you would play in its region, Anaka, the Darkened Sphere. This card works for two main reasons. One, in the early game, Anaka can be played as a 2 cost equipment that gives its bear plus 2 health. This means that Anaka isn't a block in your hand to like most titanic units, while also being helpful to protect your squishier units. And two, 
The secondary effect of the equipment can snowball hard. There are plenty of times when that extra health on a unit matters. From this effect, you can win from just pure outstanding your opponent easily. And eventually, if you do hit 8 mana, a Nagus effect upon attacking can high roll some of your other titanic units as well. This unit has been played in many different decks. Formidable loves the initial plus 2 health. Vrom Vladimir and Elites likes bigger units, and Volibear enjoys Zalvitate for a flexible titanic unit. Anaka has claimed my number one top pick for the best titanic unit. But that's that. These were my top 5 best titanic units in Legends of Runeterra. And thank you Dresbo, Sonicstar, and Kyle Felter for helping me with this video. You guys are rock stars. If you enjoyed this type of bite sized lore content, subscribe and see you again in 2 weeks. Anyways, I'm Kryn. Don't do illegal, don't play Yu Gi Oh! Alright, peace.